Now what I've done is I've set up a piece of stock cue in my end vise. Now usually I would put this into a leg vise or a side vise, but in this case it's much easier for me to film this when it's in my end vise. And because the piece is so short, it's really not an issue doing it here. But if it was a longer piece, you definitely, for stabilization purposes, definitely want to put it into a leg vise. And so what I've done here is I've got this uh, taking a pretty decent shaving. It's not too thick. As you can see here, it's taking a pretty good shaving. It's curling up nicely and it's uh, pretty clean. But you can see in the beginning here when I started setting this up, I was getting a much thicker shaving. Now that is... I don't know if the camera can see it, but that is noticeably thicker. Right, that's noticeably thicker. And you can feel it. You can see that. See how straight that is compared to how much that curled up? That's just how much thicker that, that piece is. And so again, you can either hold like this, you know, push into here. And you just push it through. Now, back here, you can either put your finger like this, or you can grab it kind of like this, but on the smaller planes, especially when everything's more squished together, like on the number four I showed you, you're going to have to do this, so it's kind of a good habit to get into. And when we're talking about the edge here, what you'll see some people do is they'll actually take their thumb and they'll put it onto this part of the plane, and then run their finger up against the side. And that way what they're doing is they're keeping themselves at 90, and that way the edge of this piece should be at 90 degree angle. Doing it like this, you can kind of tilt, uh, and so that doesn't work nearly as well. Now again, down here is how we adjust. So if I wanted to go deeper, I'd twist it this way. If I wanted to take off less, I'd twist it this way. So, and we start over here, and we push that through. Now that's for end grain. Now for face grain, which I might be able to set up here, I'm gonna take this, I'm going to grab a dog, which is over here. That'll work. Pop this up. We just put that into our bench dogs. Like so. Oh, didn't mean to do that. So now, should still be able to see that on camera. Here. You just take that, and you just push it right through it. Same way, obviously if we're taking off a pretty thick shaving before, we're going to want to tone that back now because we're taking off quite a bit more wood now. This piece is pretty beat up and it's just not flat anymore. But you can still see that shaving is much wider compared to that shaving that we were taking on the edge. So especially on a fairly flat wood, we're going to be taking full width in here and so we're going to want to take off a little bit less material. And this is also why we want to make sure, I'm doing this pretty slow so that you can see, this is also why we want to make sure that our, uh, that our iron here is very uh, straight across here, because if it was not straight across, what you would see happening is that on this piece of wood, where you plane it, you'd take one shaving here, and maybe there was a line here. That line was because the iron was digging into that side, and it made a line. It wasn't flat across, but it was digging into that side. And so that, especially when you're finishing a board, is, is really why you want to set up that plane real nice so that it's always right flat across and not digging in on one side. And now you always go with the grain, uh, face grain. Uh, now if you're trying to take off a lot of stock quickly, you can go across the grain, but you always have to finish it like this. Same thing with sanding, uh, same as sanding. Uh, you're always going to go with the grain. And now again, I don't know if you can see that. I don't know how easy it's going to be for me to show, but actually I can just take the other one. Now these bench dogs fit into these holes on the bench. Look kind of like that. This here is just a coat hanger that helps keep it in that hole. Has that cut in. And it fits into there, like so. You push that down, and now that's in there when you can push wood up against it, and that won't move. And so that's what I have further back here that the camera cannot see. And then these, because of their design, can just go right and back underneath the bench so that they're flush. Of course, getting that one back is going to be tough because it's underneath a vise. That was a bad idea to do. So I have to get that one out now. Is it even possible? Maybe that's not possible to do.
I'm gonna have to get that out some other way. Grab a pair of pliers. Got one over here, they should work. So, if there are any questions about planes, plane maintenance, plane care, again, plane troubleshooting, so just like that. That's why it's nice to have that in there, you can pull it out. Uh, you, should, you can just ask me in the comments. I'll be able to answer those as soon as I can. That was obvious. I should be able to answer them pretty much as soon as I post them. Uh, so, thanks for all the questions. Now, if you have that same kind of dog and it sticks in like that, what you can do is you can just take it, smack it, and it pops back out. Um, so that's that. Uh, what planes are my favorite? Uh, I like, now these are Stanleys, and I use Stanley based, I mean, almost everything I have is Stanley. I use quite a bit of it, so I do like Stanleys. The old Stanleys are definitely, you know, uh, they were seen as some of the best that were made. Uh, but today, if you need to buy a plane today, these are obviously very cheap, uh, but the best would probably be very, uh, Veritas or Lee Valley. But these are cheap and work just fine. The other ones have a couple features that maybe are a little bit better, but the difference between them is marginal at best. So if you just need a plane, I'd say buy one of these. Now again, this is a jack plane, which is number five. Um, the other one, number four, that's a smoothing plane. Six would be a four plane, and seven is a jointer. Uh, I have all of those except the six. Now below four, there is threes and twos, but you almost basically don't see those. Those are real specialty things that you don't find anymore, basically, and you don't use, pretty much. They're just kind of... They, they exist, but they're not used a whole lot. Uh, so that's what I wanted to say. Uh, now, to plain end grain. Let's talk about that. So, to plain end grain like this, you could... You could just take that, put it in your vise, and then plain that. But what that'll do is on the end, that'll all tear out. Right, it'll hit that, it'll be real hard to plain this, and then that'll all tear out, because you'll catch this, and that'll push off. So what you use instead is a shooting board. Now this this is a uh, this is just one design. There's many designs, but how these work? Oh, you don't do that. All right. So how these work is you put your piece of wood in here. Obviously, this is in the way at the moment, but your piece of wood fits into here, and then you run your plane along this track, and you plane the end grain like that. And this here is like a zero clearance sensor, so that means there's no tail out behind it, or at least very minimal tail out. To make that one easier, I have this waxed. Um, now don't wax in here because it'll get on the wood and it won't help with finishes, but the way that stays in the table is, you can see one, two, three dogs that just fit into my bench like so. So to tap these out, you just tap the end of it with a hammer, that'll slide out because this is a wedge. So that'll just slide out, I'll show you here. I'm just going to take a regular hammer, you could use a steel faced hammer like that or anything else, and that just comes right out and allows you to now plane the end grain of that board. This will also go in like this, if I were to take this one out, and then I can also just take it, put it back in here, put that in, tap the end of it, make sure it's flat, and then we're ready to go. So that's planing edge, face, and end grain in a nutshell, and also how you use a plane, uh, you know, terminologies of a plane, fix a plane, take it apart. And when you take it apart, you take it apart, it's very simple. A couple screws and then it just fits back together, and that works very well. This is Paul Sellers, um shooting board, you can look that up if you want. I made a couple changes to it, but it's basically the exact same board as he made. And, uh, so that's that. Um, if you have any questions, again, just leave those in the comments. I'll try and get to those as fast as I can. And what I also want to do, uh, eventually here I'm going to do a video on shooting a video like this with no tripod. Because I did find a pretty cool way to do it. And a, little, a little bit janky, but it's pretty cool. So, uh, if you want to see that, leave a comment. Or like the video, I guess. Try to hype up a video that I may never do because this I spoke about it. Still not a clock, but I'll get to it, I promise.
Um, also, this was going to be a picture frame, then I messed up. That might be an upcoming video as well, but otherwise that's going to be it. Uh, running a little bit long here, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.